over 1 million Syrian refugees are expected to come to Germany in the next year. Another 42 Syrian refugees were found dead on a truck on the Austrian highway a few weeks ago. Many more have also lost their lives trying to cross the Mediterranean, but have instead become its victims. Migration is a global phenomenon that is the subject of many heated debates all over the world. We hear about it so often in the media, our countries, our own communities. But what is migration, really? Migration is defined as the movement of people to a new area or country in order to find work or better living conditions. There are legal and illegal migrants. Legal migrants generally enter the country under some form of scheme and are often deemed beneficial to their host country. They are also known as economic migrants, but can be resettled from war zones. Illegal migrants, however, decide to leave their country and take part on a voyage to a new host country without going through legal and administrative formalities. Numerous examples can be found across the globe. For example, Mexicans seeking to enter the United States, Asians trying to reach Australia, and even Africans trying to reach the borders of Malta or Italy in order to get into the European Union. There are various reasons why people resort to illegal migration, but the main motivation is financial. Refugees are a category of migrants who are fleeing persecution or severe discrimination in their home country. All right now, in the world, it is estimated that there are more than a whopping 19.5 million refugees. And an even more shocking statistic is that in 2014, 51% of these 19.5 million refugees were under the age of 18. There are no boundaries to the amount of refugees and migrants coming in daily and seeking protection. But can boundaries be created? We are legally and morally obliged to offer these people protection, even if it is on a temporary basis. Also known as asylum seekers, they may be kept in detention centres for up to 12 months whilst their application for asylum is being processed. However, they are given the right to seek for employment after nine months. If their application for asylum is accepted, then they officially become beneficiaries of international protection. There are thousands of people from countries like Syria, Sudan, Somalia and Eritrea who are living close to the border in makeshift overcrowded camps with very little facilities and prospects. In fact, Turkey is hosting more than 2 million Syrian refugees and Lebanon and Jordan are also overwhelmed, hosting more than 2 million combined. So, what should our countries do? What should our governments do? What can we do to help countries like Syria? We cannot simply send people back or build walls or even stay indifferent in the face of this huge humanitarian tragedy. I think we are all agreed there. Herein lies the problem. There are so many different ideas and opinions on what to do about migration and the refugee crisis. Some are claiming that we, as understanding and helpful human beings, should open our doors and welcome these people into our home. It's a lovely thought, it's very generous and nice, but will it work? How many people sitting in the audience today would gladly and without a doubt in their mind open their doors and welcome a family of refugees into their household until the situation in their country improved so much that they could return? Not many. It might sound callous and inhuman, but people only feel morally obliged to help until the situation affects them. And so we dance about the issue, talking about how people need to do anything, something, to help the crisis, with very few practical ideas of what that anything or something may be. I believe that the approach taken needs to be humanitarian, yet fair and practical. 
We cannot control the crisis with the idealistic mentality of we've got to help everybody. I'm sorry, but Prince Charming can't save everyone. Some of the comments surrounding migration have been very ugly indeed. When facing a financial crisis or a high unemployment rate, many countries tend to blame their problems on the migration phenomenon. They say that the migrants are stealing their jobs and costing the country money when the country could be investing it in its own public sectors, such as health or education. The Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, who's behind me, has said some very disturbing things about migration. He claims that everything which is taking place in front of our eyes at this very moment threatens to have explosive consequences on the whole of Europe. He continues to say that the people coming, meaning the refugees, are mainly Muslims, not Christians. And he's worried whether Europe will be able to maintain its Christian roots. Now, in light of what has happened yesterday, by which I mean the Paris terrorist attack, I may have to admit that what he has said may be somewhat truthful. However, he is giving migration and refugees a very bad image and reputation, and he is generalizing where generalization should not occur. I believe that these are people who only leave their countries to escape the horror of their own. So why would such people want to inflict these horrors on other countries? If you would ask the majority of refugees, I'm sure that they would very much not agree with what has happened yesterday. Now, do you feel uncomfortable? That's good. Only now that we have gotten past that humanitarian we must help point of view can proper discussion and opinions take place and only now can we properly start to think about how we can tackle the crisis. On to more reasonable ideas then. In Europe or within the European Union, not all 28 countries receive the same amount of refugees or migrants if you will. Some countries, such as Germany, Sweden, and France, receive thousands, hundreds of thousands, in fact, annually, and are struggling to take in even more. Other countries, such as Lithuania and Slovakia, receive hardly any. And of course, countries like Germany receive so many due to their generous benefit systems. But then again, it's not just about absolute size. Countries like Malta are very small and are struggling to take in the amount that they have to. If Europe is to cope with the migration crisis, quotas need to be established. For example, 2,000 in Malta is equal to 1 million in Germany if one were to take GDP and population as criteria. And also, England is taking in 20,000 Syrian refugees over the next four years, meaning 5,000 a year, whilst Germany is taking in 1 million Syrian refugees over the next year. Even though England and Germany are relatively similar in size, their refugee intake is completely different. Another solution would be more equitable burden sharing. For example, the EU recently decided to relocate 160,000 Syrian refugees from Italy and Greece so that other countries could also share the burden. It's progress, but more needs to be done if we are to properly cope with this crisis. Another possibility which can take place, and is already taking place, is sending back people that don't need protection. Illegal migrants who are not suffering severe discrimination or persecution in their country of origin can be sent back to their native country. They are not refugees, they are simply illegal migrants. However, this process is very long and can be very demanding and, very, and may require a lot of resources. But it can be done. 
another possibility, which may be a bit more of a long-term solution, is us Western countries getting together and trying to make a visible change in countries such as Syria or Somalia or Eritrea, where persecution and discrimination is present. I'm not just talking about financial aid here. I'm also talking about starting off by maybe helping these countries become more politically stable and hopefully eventually forming a democracy. If countries like Syria or Sudan or Somalia or Eritrea were to gain some overall stability, then refugees would have no reason to take part on a voyage that they don't want to do. Both sides would be happy. And having said that, it is a solution that can't happen in the snap of a finger and it's very time consuming and will require decades. So I believe that in summarizing my points, the three main solutions which can take place right now would be establishing quotas, burden sharing, and sending back people that do not require protection. Migration is not a regional phenomenon, but a global one. And the problem can only become less acute if every country were to do its part and help through solidarity, not dream of idealistic sound bites. If we were to do what is required of us, then yes, Migration can be controlled, and the crisis can, and the boundaries of the crisis can be created. Thank you for listening.